Yes, Chairman Dada, we do have a quorum. I believe it is 5.30 and uh, good evening everyone and thank you for joining the March Airport Commission meeting. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for being absent for so long. And at this time, I would like to request David Feltman, the ball catcher to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Um, I can't stand up because I'm in a car, but uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands under God with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, David, much appreciated. And uh, I'm looking at it that the agenda was posted March 10th. Is that correct? That is correct. Would you give us the roll call, please? Good evening, commissioners. Please take a moment to unmute your microphones. Commissioner Adams is excused. Commissioner Breslin? Present. Badillo? Badillo? Burke? Present. Good evening. Corcoran? Present. Dada? Here. Feldman? Here. Freemuth? Here. Hedrick? Here. Commissioner Hughes is excused. Martin? Martin? Miller? I believe I saw Miller come in. Commissioner Payne is excused. Philbrook? Philbrook? Pye? Here. Schmitz? Here. Suero? Here. Wheel? Here. Wiseman? Here. Thank you. Do we have any changes to the agenda? If not, I would like to see someone make a motion to for the acceptance, please. So moved. Second. We have a motion for David and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Christina, any public comments that people we, have either called in or submitted email? We do not have any submitted or scheduled comments for this evening. Uh, we'll give it a moment to see if anyone would like to raise their hand to speak at this time. We do not have anyone wishing to speak in public comments tonight. Thank you so much. I will let attention for the approval of the minutes from the February meeting. So move. So second. Move. A second. Any changes, anything? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Attention. Introduction and presentations, do we have any? We do not have any presentations for this section tonight. Great, so we will now move on. If our CEO and city manager is on, the city manager's report. Chairman Dada, I don't believe the city manager is on yet. Um, so we'll, we'll give him a minute. I'm not sure if he's showing up. Uh, but we can roll into uh, agenda item nine. All right, we'll move on to the agenda item nine, A operations. And I believe we will have a presentation from Commissioner Schmidt. Yes, this is Commissioner Schmidt. We, um, the operations committee met on the 3rd of March and we had six out of our seven members uh, there and we had a very good and lively discussion. Originally, uh, the agenda item was the, uh, the, the clear biometric identification system, but then we also expanded into a discussion of uh, parking capacity, valet services, and um, arrival baggage. 
So I'll start with Claire. Um, in in the last commission meeting, we did we did cover a number of points related to Clear. We took those forward into the committee and discussed them further. We had a we had a presentation by representatives of Clear and um, any lingering questions that that we had coming out of the last commission meeting um, were were answered. And th and those questions primarily related to um, operational characteristics. Um, where was the clear lane going to go? Um, in, in fact, that was discussed at the last commission meeting, um, as well as who would be bearing uh, the, the costs. And uh, it turned out that it would be clear. Uh, clear would be bearing the costs and also uh, uh, providing staffing and um, providing revenue to the airport. Um, the, there's a reasonably good presentation in the package that was um, passed out. And of course, we have that, I think, as, as the next agenda item anyway, clear. We, um, we endorsed uh, the airport taking on the clear system. We, uh, we had a motion that was passed unanimously um, to to put that forward to the uh, to the full commission, and of course uh, we'll we'll cover that next. Um, any additional um, issues that we talked about? Um, one one was uh, there, there was a there was a concern on on the price of Clear membership. Um, it is one hundred and seventy nine dollars a month. Um, we made a point to the representatives of Clear. Um, that they might consider um, um, lowering that price for lower income people as, as well as uh, those of us who are of a certain age, <laughs> such okay. as myself. Um, the next thing we talked about was parking capacity. Uh, I think as everyone knows, uh, on the holidays last year, Thanksgiving and the December holidays, uh, the, the lots were full up. And um, even now past the holidays, I, I believe they're at about 50% capacity. So um, um, the um, um, airport management and staff talked about um, some of the measures that they're they're thinking about, um, you know, proactively pursuing this um, ahead of the curve, and and I think that becomes um, exceedingly important as as we now have um, events uh, happening such as Indian Wells uh, that that were deferred over the last two years, and and more events probably coming into the valley. Um, one of the things that was discussed was the potential for um, acquiring a piece of property that's, that's adjacent to the overflow lot, um, as well as providing shuttle service. Um, these are issues that um, we are, are not yet fully resolved and will be taken to the, uh, to the full commission uh, at the appropriate time. We also talked about um, valet services valet services um, for parking were put in place some years ago, but um, it, it, was, it was not a successful um, venture. And the more we discussed it, 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 um, it appeared to be that it was not marketed. And of course, uh, it, it was different days. Um, so uh, the, the um, airport management is interested in, in implementing um, this sometime in the near future. Um, again, details um, remain to, uh, to be fully discussed. Uh, then we talked about baggage claim uh, capacity. Um, there are three carousels um, and they're more than fully used um, during peak. Peak is uh, between about 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. And there are, uh, in that two hour period, um, there are approximately 17 or 18 uh, commercial airline flights coming in. 
And uh, what's happening is um, there's congestion in the baggage hall. Um, not only are people um, waiting anxiously for their bags to arrive, but more and more people start filling the, um, the, the hall. And um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a good PR position to be in. Um, I have heard from a number of people I know who have come through during the, that peak period um, and they are, to put it mildly, a, a bit disappointed. So uh, airport management and staff are, are looking at measures. One, one <coughs> potential measure um, is to relocate um, at least some um, of the um, rental car desks and potentially create a, a fourth area. Um, I myself am not sure exactly how that, um, that would work, but uh, there, there is potential for that. Um, the um, um, airport management and staff have been uh, speaking to uh, the airlines and their ground handlers about um, trying to make um, baggage handling, especially during peak, more effective. And of course, it's, it's probably not until um, we get to a point where we have the, uh, the CONRAC, the Consolidated Car Rental Facility, um, where we can vacate all of the uh, car rental desks um, and reconfigure um, the um, um, arrivals um, baggage facility and systems, but that's that's going to be some some time away. Um, we we discussed that um, the airport is preparing uh, an RFP for um, updating the uh, airport master plan, um, which is something I think we would all be very interested in. That discussion got to a point where um, we thought it was um, getting more and more critical that um, we try to have an, an, an offsite meeting where we could go through a number of the issues that are confronting us that would make, make their way into uh, this um, updated revised master plan. Um, and we also talked about, uh, given the issues that are out there, um, potentially at least convening the operations committee on, on a more regular basis, um, say once every couple of months, um, knowing full well, of course, that that draws on um, management and staff time. Um, but we believe that there are a number of issues out there that do need to be addressed. And so that's my report. Any questions for Commissioner Schmidt? And thank you for the detailed uh, meeting report. I just had uh, one uh, one question, uh, Commissioner. You mentioned that Clear was one hundred and seventy nine dollars a month. Did did you mean one hundred and seventy nine dollars? Oh, I'm, yes, I meant one hundred and seventy nine. Uh, let me correct that. <laughs> They'd like to have it at one hundred and seventy nine a month. I'm sure, sure but it's uh, but it's per annum. Okay, and I'm sure we can. That this will be part of the discussion in the next item. But they have. Uh, different tiers, family members can add on for $50. So there, there are ways to bring that down as well as your elite status with participating airlines. But thank you for the report. Yes. Uh, thank you for the report, Commissioner Smith. I also would like to add that some credit card have uh, clear as a benefit. So it's included as a benefit for some credit cards as well. Excellent. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you again one more time. We move on and who will do the clear presentation? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I do see Erica from Clear on the phone, so I'm not sure if she can hear us or if she's available to speak. But Erica, if you're there, can you uh, uh, add some context? Hi, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. Happy to participate in this, um, however is most helpful. So, um, so Erica, can you just uh, 
you know, briefly just add any uh, additional context that you may have with regard to the service, um, what your uh, plans are for CLEAR. Um, <clears throat> you, on the airport side, we are expecting CLEAR to, to launch the first week of April. Uh, we are working through the contractual issues as well as the uh, security amendment updates now, but uh, Erica, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. I can give a little bit of, of oversight if it's helpful into what our operations are, are proposed and sort of what we're working towards. So um, the way that the clear product works is as a member um, registers their biometric either via fingerprint or iris or facial scan at one of our kiosks. Once their identity is confirmed, one of our ambassadors escorts them to a dedicated clear lane. And from there, they have an expedited security process through the document security portion. They then go to physical screening, either via pre-check or standard, depending on the, on the member's status. Um, but, but one of the big benefits is, is obviously a, a service for our members that folks love because it's frictionless. Um, you know, it, 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 it comes in an anticipatory um, amount of time. People know when they need to get to the airport in order to catch their flight and sort of long lines don't catch our members by surprise. But the other thing that's really beneficial in terms of an airport perspective and probably what's most relevant to this conversation today is CLEAR allows for very high throughput and efficiency of the airport screening lines, um, especially when airports are experiencing really high peaks in their travel volumes. And I, and I recognize that PSP Airport is not only growing very quickly coming out of this um, recovery very strong, um, but also has sort of limited operating hours in terms of flight patterns. So it leads to very high peaks and, and sort of relatively quiet valleys. So CLEAR will be um, sort of a force multiplier in terms of helping the TSAs be very quick with um, their, their review and screening of our members, as well as relieving the congestion and length of the existing uh, pre-check and standard lines without having any impact to those operations. And what I mean by that is CLEAR has proposed and the airport is considering allowing CLEAR to use an underutilized space of the airport checkpoint. So um, it's it's currently the um, employee use lane as, as the dedicated <laughs> CLEAR space. So we won't take any physical footprint from your existing lanes um, and, and those will be able to stay as is. So we have been so appreciative of the partnership and support from the airport. I mean, you guys have been such wonderful partners and we're so excited to be able to have an opportunity to enter the Palm Springs um, airport and region as a whole. I realize that was a very long spiel. Um, please let me know if that was helpful or directional or if you all have more questions on CLEAR or operations at the airport. Thank you, Erica, for the presentation. Commissioners, anyone has any question? Yes. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if you had any uh, estimate of the throughput increase we could expect at peak hours? Yeah, that's a great question. So sort of our, our rough averages is, is TSA from what, from all of our relationships um, that we have with TSA in standard lines, they do anywhere sort of depending on, on airport and volume and how many document checkers there are per lane. They'll do anywhere between 80 and 120 standard members an hour. Um, and, and CLEAR very routinely is able to get numbers of about 150 an hour. So, so that's a pretty material impact, especially if the amount of document checkers and lanes are, are quite limited. Um, so, so that's sort of an insight into the impact that we can have in terms of increasing thoroughput in the in the point for an airport. Yes. So will you be able to sign up for clear at PSP? Yes, that's a great question. So our kiosks will be actually multi-purpose. They'll be used for verifications for our members to go through the lanes, but they'll also be used for new members to enroll or existing members to renew their membership. So we'll be able to, to do a lot with a very limited footprint. And so you'll have multiple kiosks? Yep, um, I believe the proposal is for four kiosks at the airport. Okay, thank you. And, and Erica, you can actually start the, uh, the enrolling process at home. That's or, right. I mean, ahead of time as well, right? That's right. Our goal is to make this as frictionless and as easy as possible. So if folks want to start the enrollment process at home, they can finish it up by just verifying their um, 
what we call the biometrics. Again, it's a fancy word for like their fingerprint or face um, at the airport and have that process done in as little as five minutes. Another great benefit is if you enroll at the airport, you can use clear on your departing flight. Um, and, and that's really great. And honestly, we see sometimes folks that are sort of in a pinch or, or run into lines that are a bit longer than they anticipated, use clear to expedite their way through security. Everyone who enrolls with clear at an airport gets a two week free trial. So if they just want to use it to, to get their plane and, and never use it again, that's certainly an option that comes with no financial implication. Um, but we do find folks enroll at the airport for the, for the use of, of that trip that day, love the experience, and then our lifelong members. And, and uh, I'd like to just add, I've been a Clear member. I was, I was a member of Clear before this particular company owned this version of Clear. So oh, wow, long the, time. The generations of Clear. And, and I will tell you, this particular company who owns Clear this time and operates it, is, it's fantastic. Um, I, what I really love about it is the consistency of their team members who are greeting you with a welcome back. So it, it definitely fits into what we're trying to do in creating um, a, an amazing experience for those who come through PSP. So um, I highly recommend it and literally have had zero issues with Clear over the, the decades. I am so pleased to hear that. And that means so much to hear that. And, and as one sort of final plug, um, our ambassadors, the, the folks who are staffing our lanes and getting our, our members through this experience are really the lifeblood of this company. They're security trained, they're hospitality trained. It is so important for us for, to have them be a fabric of the airport. So if someone comes up to them and says, hey, where's the bathroom? our ambassadors is gonna guide them. And, and we encourage that and want that. So we really hope that our team being at the airport is going to be a benefit, not just for our members, but for the whole airport. Any other questions for Erica? Yes. Um, I was just hoping maybe you could talk about the, the number of jobs this would be creating on the clear side and sort of the, the gen general sort of salary and, and benefits packages. Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, I think I can answer it this way. So we are anticipating creating at the airport approximately 20 benefited, well-paying jobs, and that'll be our ambassadors, but also the airport leadership team. So we hire a general manager, an operations manager to oversee our ambassadors um, and, and to, to be physically located at the airport um, just about every day. So, so that's sort of the scope of our team. Again, well-paying jobs that are, that are benefited, um, you know, taking care of our team is something that's really important. And, and we have a lot of pride in, in sort of how we, um, we, we compensate our team. Great question. Any other questions? Seeing none, Erica, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you, you sort of skated past the well-paying jobs. Can you just give us an estimate of what an ambassador makes? You know, and I apologize. I don't have that information for me. And, and as I'm sure you can appreciate, it, it differs by the region, um, depending on sort of, you know, cost of living, et cetera. Um, that's something I can work in with my team to see if I can provide that with you all um, uh, in sort of a, a, a separate manner. Happy to work to see what I can provide. And apologies, I don't have that off the, offhand. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, Erica, thank you for joining us. We will now move on to our budget and finance chair, Commissioner Feldman. Excuse me, um, Chairman Dada, we have a, uh, let me see, we need to make a vote on clear. Oh, we have to, okay. Yes, we're like going to make a motion to recommend to the city council the approval of a non-exclusive operating and lease agreement with all clear LLC doing business is clear. So moved. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any abstention, any no. Seeing none, motion passes unanimously. We move on to our budget and finance chair. Commissioner Feldman, right. anxious waiting to exit so he can go into the tennis court. That would not be me. Um, so uh, good evening, everybody. The budget committee met on March 1st. Um, it was a productive uh, meeting focused largely on the staff's 
presentation of the budget, which we voted at the conclusion of that meeting to recommend for the full duration of the commission. Um, and we'll be having that presentation um, in a few minutes um, by the staff. Um, we also discussed um, some areas that the budget committee intends to pursue in the uh, further meetings that we agreed upon. Um, and that is uh, it, spending some time uh, looking at the, the, the monthly reporting that's provided to the commission. There are a number of um, perspectives on that that we spent only a few minutes on because of the length of time naturally it took for the budget presentation to be um, made to the to the committee. Um, we also talked about some capital projects, interests, and um, how to um, have, I think, a deeper understanding of what's happening on the capital projects. And there will be some further discussion of that tonight as well. Um, and, um, and just a, a discussion about how we um, will continue to engage on the on the reporting which I mentioned earlier and we agreed as a committee that we would continue to meet for the first three consecutive months March April May and then every other month through the end of the year and the committee um, agreed on that with the staff um, and, um, and I think that's um, it because the the meat of this discussion is about the budget and I think uh, Harry and Victoria you're taking it from here if I remember correctly Yes, uh, thank you, Commissioner. I'll turn it over to Victoria and she'll provide uh, a report. All right, um, let me make sure, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, oh, perfect, thank you. Yes. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is just a, a an overview of the budget that we are had presented to the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, it is actually still um, in a little bit of a draft. We are still making some changes to it up until um, the city needs the final version of it. Um, but primarily this is um, this is the main maintenance and operations uh, fund 415 budget that we are proposing. Um, if you look, and hopefully my screen is large enough for, for you to be able to see, um, if you look at the, the very far right column, this is the proposed budget for fiscal year 23. Um, we are proposing that there is going to be about 29 million in revenues and approximately uh, 28 million in expenditures. And that is for our typical operation and maintenance, um, our PERS set aside, as well as proposed additional staffing. Um, we are also anticipating to draw down on more of the grants, um, particularly the CARES grant, the CRISA grant, and the, um, the airport portion of it, as well as the um, ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act. So with these drawdowns and with the capital projects that we're proposing, um, we will have a surplus for the budget. Um, there are three other funds that we work with, um, more particularly the customer facility charge. Um, that is related to our car rental um, transactions. And recently we just increased the car rental transactions from $10 per transaction to $9 per day up to five days. That took effect March 1st. And so we are actually proposing um, larger revenues to come in for the customer facility charge fund. And that is going to primarily help us fund our consolidated rental car facility um, that we have planned for the future. So that is strictly for that, that project. Um, we are anticipating uh, to go into the uh, planning process for that. And that could potentially lead to us having to hire a um, consultant to do the design work for the consolidated rental facility. So um, we will still have a surplus um, for the cash fund. Um, we are trying to get this cash fund to be very hefty so that once we do decide to move forward with starting to build the consolidated rental car facility, 
we have um, a good amount of funds in there to help us with that. Um, the passenger facility charge uh, fund 410, um, we are proposing that there is going to be a surplus in that account. Um, we are, this is the fee that is collected on the tickets that the airline sells. It's a $4.50 per ticket up to $18. Um, I do know that the airlines, they keep 11 cents for themselves for doing that collection and administrative processes, and then they send the remaining to us. Um, so we are expecting to have a surplus in that amount. We are still paying our bonds, uh, our principal and interest for the bonds that we took out to help finance the uh, ticket wing project. So we always like to include that principal and interest in um, the annual budget. And then this is still, this, this area here is the maintenance and operation fund 415. Um, just a breakdown of what you saw on that other sheet there. Um, like I stated, with our grant funding, we anticipate to have um, a hefty cash reserve balance, um, but we are proposing to um, have some capital improvements that we are going to be doing over the next few years. So um, this is the 21.8 million is what we're proposing as our ending cash balance. And then of course we have our capital projects that are in our fund 416. Um, this includes federal grants for our um, ACIP, which is our airport capital improvement project where we get grant funding from the FAA. Um, for this year, we have some grants proposed or some projects proposed where we're gonna get some ACIP. I'll go into that into a little bit more detail. Um, let's see, let me minimize this a little bit more. This is our capital projects that we have planned for the upcoming uh, fiscal year 23 budget, 2.73 million for capital projects. And then- um, um, Victoria, this, yeah, is, sure. uh, this is Scott Miller. You may wanna let the commission know that you have to uh, also share and get approval from the airlines for um, these types of projects. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. Um, we still have to, we, we haven't met with the airlines yet, but this is our proposed plan um, and proposed projects that we will be presenting to the airlines, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Um, that is our plan. Um, and they do have to vote on these projects to um, authorize us to get to move forward with this, this special capital projects plan. Um, this next sheet is our federal grants that we're going to be receiving. Um, we do have to do a 10% local match. Um, this includes the design and the construction of the taxiway rehabilitation for taxiway whiskey and taxiway alpha one. We did a uh, pavement management index. I believe that's what it's called a PMI on the, um, the asphalt that's on our taxiways. And there's some areas that need some immediate attention. Um, we also are going to be doing the airfield wildlife hazard management assessment, as well as um, an airfield hotspot study, um, as well as a master plan. So those are some projects that we have upcoming in the fiscal year 22 and 23. Some of the funds are kind of going to carry over between the two years because the um, federal side has a different federal fiscal year. They start on October 1st and they end on September 30th versus our fiscal year is from July 1 through June 30th. Um, this is just a breakdown of the revenue that we are anticipating to receive. Um, the 29 point, the 29 million is what we're budgeting for revenue. And then this is our expenditures the 28 million for expenditures. And we even included the marketing budget as a separate line item. Um, oops, this looks like that's supposed to be over here in the budget, sorry. So we're budgeting 639,000 for the marketing budget. Um, and then the last, I believe it's the last one. 
Um, this is our federal grants summary. So this includes our CARES Act, our CRISA Acts, um, our ARPA, and the proposed infrastructure uh, grant. So it shows our projected amounts for 2022, as well as 2023, and then the estimated ending balance as of 2023. And then that is it for the budget. Um, you have any questions? Uh, can I just ask a process question? Are we, um, because this is still tentative, is it correct to assume that the commission will be able to have an opportunity to vote on this in April or are you needing a vote tonight? Um, we Thanks commissioner for that question. So. Uh, we were hoping for a vote tonight. We actually need to move this forward to finance so that they can uh, finalize it with the caveat that if there are any major changes, we would bring it back to the commission to discuss those changes. We don't anticipate that there will be any, but we never know what the airlines are, are gonna respond to, so. Are there one or two particular areas that you think are more likely to have some change occur, line items? If there were any change, I would suspect it would be either in our capital, uh, and that would be as a result of the airlines vetoing or wanting uh, another project to be included in the capital, or would be on the operating side uh, specific to uh, our staffing. Okay. And would we receive notification as a commission um, if there were modifications before uh, that are made? Uh, before we meet next? Yeah, any any major modifications, we would definitely uh, come back to the commission and notify you and let you know what those are. If there are minor adjustments just between line items, I don't expect that we would come back to the commission for that. Understood, thank you. So at this time, any questions from any of the commissioners? Y yes, hello. Uh, I would like to know, do we receive any revenue uh, for people who do uh, reservation, car share reservation through Turo, and uh, you know, as an arriving passenger, for example, uh, receiving the car at the airport? We do not. We currently okay. do not have an agreement with Turo. Okay. Because, okay. Are you saying it's happening? <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> then we could definitely look into that and then reach out to them and then start working yeah. on an agreement with them because we definitely yeah. want to get that portion of revenue. Exactly. I mean, I know it's a newer concept, uh, but obviously the way they advertise is like, why wait at the car rental, you know, line at the airport? We just bring the car to you, you know. Okay. Very easy. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, just to be fair. <laughs> okay. No, thank you. And you have the question. I think uh, um, Scott Miller, um, sorry, my video, uh, my signal is really bad and won't do the video. So I apologize. But um, the uh, David ran a, or Commissioner Feldman ran a very uh, tight meeting. And uh, I think staff got a lot of questions from uh, the committee members. Um, and so I think they were fairly uh, inundated with questions. And I think uh, uh, Harry and Victoria did a great job in uh, answering uh, the vast majority of the questions. Uh, and I do want to thank uh, uh, Victoria and uh, Harry for um, what, what I call operation, operationalizing a lot of the acronyms um, because uh, airports as well as government does a lot of acronyms. And we sometimes forget that uh, if you're not in the biz, you don't know what these acronyms mean. <clears throat> so I wanted to extend a thank you to Victoria and to Harry for putting together the aviation acronym list. Um, and uh, also uh, to uh, you know spell out some of those acronyms on the budget. I think that will help the other commissioners and I think will help the general public who will be looking at all of this. So I appreciated that. Um, and. Uh, um, as uh, I think uh, uh, Commissioner Feldman said that, uh, you know, the committee uh, approved this uh, for the commission's uh, 
uh, approval as well. Thank you. Any other <clears throat> any other questions for Victoria? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to pass or approve the budget put together and the presentation given by Victoria today. So moved. Second. A second. And a second. Any further questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you, motion passes unanimously. We move on to, and again, Victoria, great job. Thank you. Thank you, David, for the Budget and Finance Committee. We move on to Executive Director's Report, Harry Barrett, Jr. Thank you, Chairman Dada. I do have a few things for the commission tonight. Uh, the first, uh, as promised, I, I'll continue to provide uh, the number of noise complaints that come through the airport on a monthly basis, uh, as well as parking capacity. Uh, just for the preceding month, we saw three in total noise complaints. Two were general aviation noise complaints, uh, and those were from a caller who were about 13 miles away from the airport, uh, and then one military aircraft noise complaint. So that's uh, actually a decrease, uh, which was a little surprising to us considering that we're in the peak of our, our season right now. Uh, so that's where we are with noise complaints. In terms of parking capacity for the preceding month, we were tracking an average of about 50% of occupied spaces in the public lots. Uh, those counts are taken on a per shift basis uh, and on a daily basis by our operations staff as well as by ABM. Uh, we are uh, continuing to monitor uh, those weekends where we believe that we'll have increased capacity, particularly around the holiday weekends. Uh, and certain events such as Stagecoach, which is coming up, as well as Coachella. Uh, and we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, you may or may not have heard, uh, recently we've had some baggage handling system challenges uh, in our ticketing wing. Uh, and I'll just kind of provide the problem for you and what we're doing about it. So the problem, um, right now is that the system itself, the automated inline system, the one we just paid for, uh, does not appear to be handling the capacity of baggages that is arriving at the ticket counters. Uh, we did a capacity analysis uh, in the design of the system. I believe this system is supposed to handle about 2,500 bags per hour. Right now, we're seeing that the system is actually handling about 600 bags per hour. Uh, so well short of what we are supposed to be uh, pushing through the screening room. Uh, we believe there are a combination of things uh, that are contributing to that. Uh, and there are certain airlines that are more affected than others. So the airlines at the south end of the terminal, particularly WestJet, JetBlue, Southwest, and Flair, are experiencing significant baggage delays to their aircraft, uh, whereas the, air, the airlines to the north of, of the terminal uh, they seem to be getting theirs out a little more efficiently, but not by much. Um, so they're still having some challenges at the north end of the terminal as well. From our observations, we've identified a few things. First, there are some uh, staffing challenges with TSA and the screening room. So we've been working with the assistant uh, federal security director for TSA to address that issue. Uh, she's been out here twice. She's been great to work with. Um, she's already been making adjustments to not only the staffing levels, but also some of their shift changes and how those uh, would work in the framework of the airport. Um, we've also identified that the, the baggage screening machines themselves, what we call the EDS machines, are not processing as quickly as they should be processing. Um, we are working with TSA on that issue. They're, they're coming out to adjust those machines and see if we can't get them to operate a little bit quicker. However, um, we're also noticing with the system as designed that there's a fundamental flaw in uh, the system where we have four single points of failure. Uh, so if the bags get jammed or stuck in one area, it shuts the entire system down, causing a backup. Uh, and we also noticed that there's a software flaw in the way that the bags are being metered uh, to the system and that it's providing 
Again, those, those airlines that are in the north end of the terminal are getting their bags out a little more efficiently. The ones in the south end aren't getting their bags out as efficiently. Uh, and then there's a constraint uh, in terms of the baggage that's being dropped from the curb side of the terminal and that feeds into the system through the secure area. Uh, so we've got a number of challenges there. Uh, what we've done so far, again, we've worked with TSA on, on their challenges. We're working with the airlines on slotting their bags for now. Um, so what they're doing essentially is they're identifying which flights go out first if they have multiple flights. They're prioritizing those bags for screening, holding the remainder of the bags until those get screened. Uh, and then they're trying to get the rest through the system as they can. Uh, the challenge with that is coordinating that between 13 airlines. Uh, so we're working with the airlines uh, to do that across all 13 airlines. Uh, we've also contracted with Sierra Aviation, who provided bag portering services during the ticketing wing expansion project. Sierra Aviation is providing personnel to help move those bags uh, in the back of the, the house, so in the screening room, uh, so that we can get those uh, pileups and those backups off of the ticket counter and uh, create a safe zone for the ticket, ticketing agents to be able to, to work more efficiently. Um, we're working with our operations and maintenance staff on monitoring the system in real time. So we've installed cameras so that we can identify when those challenges occur. Um, and as they occur, we're able to respond more quickly. And then finally, uh, what we're doing is we're working with the designer and with the installer. So with Swinerton and with Jervis Webb, to, um, to come out, take a look at the system, figure out uh, what we can do to, to speed up that process. Um, we believe it could be a combination of a software change as well as additional construction to make the system work more smoothly. Uh, we have a meeting with, with Swinerton and with Jervis Webb tomorrow, uh, and we'll be asking uh, those questions. The idea though is that uh, right now it's not an ideal situation for the airport, but the airport staff is responding to try and address those issues. Um, does anyone have any questions about any of that before I go on? Uh, Harriet uh, Scott Miller, um, is the contract that was signed state that that's one of the um, uh, guaranteed objectives of the baggage handling system to be able to do the 2400 um, bags as you outlined? Uh, that's accurate. So there was in the design process, uh, there was a capacity analysis done. Um, so it was done by the designer who then had that analysis vetted by uh, the, the architect and by the project managers to make sure that we were dialed in on that number. Uh, and so, yes, we were expecting the system to deliver that 2,400 bags per hour as forecast. So if things, I mean, I'm sure everyone wants to work positively to get this solved. Um, uh, but who then is, in, in your opinion, who uh, holds, who's the, where, who's the place where the buck stops um, in case, uh, you know, things can't go uh, um, as planned? Ultimately, we believe this is, this falls under our warranty. So we have a year warranty on that system. We meet that warranty, I believe, in August of this year. Um, so we're claiming this as warranty work, and we expect that the designer will correct it. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah. My questions were answered. It's, it's, it's something a lot of airports have gone through, the worst being uh, Denver when they opened their new airport. So uh, it sounds like uh, Harry has it well under control. We're doing the best that we can on the airport side. Um, other and questions? Any other questions for Harry? Yeah, if, if, I, if I may. Um, Harry, have you been hearing any um, type of complaints from passengers towards uh, the airport itself? Or, or is it too early on to even think that that would happen? So we've been having these challenges for about two and a half, three weeks now. Uh, and we noticed they increase obviously with the volume of passengers and with the volume of flights departing each day. We have not noticed any complaints um, 
not hurting complaints from passengers regarding that. Now, that said, if you walk through the terminal at certain times of the day, uh, you'll see baggage piled up in mounds uh, around the public side of the terminal. And obviously that's not a good look for Palm Springs. So we're trying to address that issue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Harry, and I'm glad that you got it under control. I'm glad that the system is currently under warranty. You're welcome. And then finally, um, kind of a tag along to that. Um, as our capacity issues continue, um, we're well aware that a lot of these problems can't be fixed immediately, right? Like some of these are gonna take um, some capital projects, some work, uh, some physical ad ad adaptations to the airport um, to make things run a little more smoothly. What I've done uh, in recent weeks is I've tasked the staff internally uh, with, uh, with starting to work on plans over the summer for the next season, so for October, November timeframe, uh, to address some of our capacity issues operationally. And that includes some of the challenges that we're experiencing landside, which is roadway access. We've noticed during certain peaks that um, the, the access to the airport, the drives get backed up a lot. Uh, parking issues, obviously, that's been a matter of concern for the commission. Um, roadway safety, uh, that's been a concern for us. We're, we're intending to address that this summer, uh, as well as things like terminal capacity and baggage claim and a, a security checkpoint. Um, and airside capacity um, with uh, aircraft parking, frankly, because as we've had more and more operations, that's become a constraint for us as well. Some of that will require process change. Some of it will require some automation. A lot of it will just require some type of physical reconfiguration of the space. Uh, but I've tasked our team internally with starting to develop those plans so that we don't find ourselves in the same situation in the fall. And I just wanted the commission to know that. Thank you. <clears throat> and that's all I have. Great. Uh, is anyone going to give us, Harry, an update on the marketing? Uh, Daniel is not here, I believe, um, but he provided his slides in, uh, for Christina to distribute, if I'm not mistaken. Got it. All right, you're gonna give us an update on 10D, which is the concession RFP update. Hi there, uh, me again. Uh, I'll go ahead and give a, a brief update on the concessions RFP. Um, staff is working internally to make some modifications to the RFP. Um, we want to make it sound very enticing so that companies want to come to our airport. Um, I was just on a recent um, ACI um, meeting and there are a lot of airports that are going through the concessions RFP process right now. Um, I want to say there was about 11 people that had chimed in saying that they're going through their, their RFP process at the moment. Um, and only one of them had received responses back um, and, and it didn't look favorable. So um, staff is going through reviewing the RFP to make sure that it sounds like we are awesome and amazing, which we are. And we are also revising some of the square footage for <clears throat> the exhibits for the area um, to include the patio square footage um, and storage square footage, as well as the actual dining and uh, retail locations. So um, we're, we're on progress with um, our initial schedule of making sure that it's out um, by June the latest, out on the streets by June the latest. And um, that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions for Victoria on the RFP update? Um, yes, please. Um, Victoria, I, I know it's an update. Thank you. And so there, there'll be another before the June um, issuing, right? And oh, we, can, we can do another one next month. Okay, great. And still on, on the plan to have some sort of 
um, educational reach out locally. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Victoria, is all the uh, the focus on our priorities for local vendors and working with them still in the RFP? Um, I believe so, yes. Um, we did, I wanna say we have like local flavor is what we call it in the RFP. Is that different than what we talked about when we reviewed this two meetings ago? Um, what, what exactly did we say that was different? We said that we were hoping the national vendors would partner with local partners. Um, I'll take a look at that section of the RFP. Right now, we're just kind of focused on the background of what we have existing at the airport and what the proposed space is. Okay. Can we make that a priority for our next meeting, please? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? <clears throat> Seeing none. We move on to commissioners' requests and reports. I believe we have none for that, so we will move on to Harry. You have any update on council action for 12A and 12B? I do have one, uh, Chairman Dada. So uh, a few meetings ago, I think it was late fall or early winter. Um, I briefed the commission on uh, the airport's desire to go ahead and procure a contract, secure a contract for janitorial services throughout the airport. And I'm happy to report that that contract was approved in the last uh, city council meeting. Uh, we are working on signatures with Vested Solutions, who is the uh, award winner of that contract. They will be providing overnight janitorial services from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, to help support our staff. Uh, and also uh, restroom attendant services during our peak hours during the day. So that was kind of a win for us uh, as we try and maintain facility hygiene and keep up with uh, the demand at the airport. Um, and they'll be working for us at least for a year. Uh, it's a one year contract with uh, two potential extensions, uh, but at least for a year until we can right size our staff uh, so that we can better address facility hygiene. Thank you for doing that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anyone have got any questions on 13A, 13B, 13C, and 13D? The reports that were given in your email. Seeing none, we move on to number 14, committees. Future committee meetings. Do we have any update? from any of the chair of the different committees. Um, for the operations committee, um, we, uh, the date is not yet set, but it will be sometime, um, I believe, toward the end of April that we'll have our next meeting. Thank you for that update. Do we have anyone, any chair from the noise committee? I believe Jill is not present. And David, I believe, is in the tennis stadium. So what committee does that leave? None other, I believe. I, I, again, I can tell you from the marketing committee, we're ad hoc. So I continue to work closely with Daniel uh, with Harry to understand if there is a need. And when we have it, I will certainly um, coordinate with Christina to make sure we give advance notice. Thank you so much. If we don't have anything else, I will take a motion to adjourn this meeting. And our next meeting is scheduled for April 20th, same time Wednesday, and we'll do it again via Zoom. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All right. And thank you all for joining. And thank you, Harry, and your staff for providing us all these reports. And thank you, Christina, for putting all this together. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Good, good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.